What is going on my friends, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 45 of our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the REST parameter. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Alright then guys, so welcome back to lesson 45. So in this lesson, we're going to learn all about the rest parameter. The rest parameter uses the same syntax as the spread operator that we learned about in the previous lesson. However, JavaScript is smart enough to know, based upon how and where we use it, whether it's a spread operator or a rest parameter. So first of all then, what is the rest parameter? The rest parameter bundles arguments together into an array. So whereas the spread pulled out or spread the values, the rest parameter does the opposite by bundling or grouping values together into an array. Let's take a look at an example. So in our text editor here, I'm going to create a function. We'll call it sum. We'll take the parameters a, b, and c. And then in our function body, we'll simply return a plus b plus c. Okay, so remember, functions can be called with as many arguments as we like, and it will not throw an error. So for example, down here, we can say console.log, and then invoke our sum function, and let's say three, one, and six. Okay, so right now, three refers to A, one refers to B, and six refers to C. And if we save, we get the sum in the console. Now, let's add some more values inside here, and save. And as you can see, we get no error in the console and these extra arguments are simply ignored. So this is where the rest parameter comes to the rescue. It's useful when we need our function call to be dynamic and we don't know how many arguments that it will take. So let's take a look at a new example. Let's first create a new array. We'll call this rest parameter. And for the parameters here, we're simply going to use our three dots and then we can call this whatever we like. Let's go for Z and then let's console log the value of z. So to clarify, let's put a little comment here. This will be an array that's been created by our rest parameter above. So remember, the rest parameter takes a bunch of values and stores them all inside an array. So what we've done here then is we've set this function up so that this can take any number of values or arguments and all those arguments will be bundled into an array and that's what this z variable refers to here. So down here, Let's invoke this function, so rest parameter. And then for the arguments, we'll just pull in a bunch of random words. Okay, so we've got apple, ball, cat, dog, elephant. And now if we save in the console, all these arguments are bundled into an array. So now our argument of apple has an index value of zero, all the way through to elephant, which has an index value of four. So to clarify then, the spread operator that we learned about in the previous lesson pulls out information from objects and arrays, whereas the rest parameter takes a list of values and puts them into an array. So they kind of do the opposite thing. In fact, taking that knowledge, we can now change this array to pull out those values. So we can actually use three dots here. And what this is doing is this is creating a spread, we're using the spread operator here, of the array. So now if we save, we get all those values that have been pulled out of this array that's been created with our rest parameter. So this is an example of using both the rest parameter and the spread operator at the same time. So once again, to clarify, I always wanna make sure that I'm explaining things as clearly as I possibly can. So let's just go through this again. So we've got a function called rest parameter. It takes the parameter of this right here, which is a rest parameter. We're using three dots and then we've just called this Z. Inside the function body, we're console logging Z, which will be an array of all of these arguments down here, and we're using the spread operator to pull all those values out, which is why when we invoke this, we get all the values here. Now, if there's only a single parameter like we've got here, then it will simply take all our arguments and put them all into an array. However, if we have more than one parameter before this is used, then it will only gather up into an array the remaining arguments. So let's take a look at an example. So here then, let's add two more parameters, so X and Y. And very important here, the rest parameter needs to be the last parameter that we use. And then inside here, let's just change a few things up. We won't use the spread operator in this example. We'll simply console log Z. And then I'm also going to console log the following. We're going to say the value of X is X. Okay, and we'll see what this will be in our function call down here. And the value of Y is Y. So down here then, when we're invoking our function, this first argument refers to X. So X is apple, Y is ball, and then finally, the remaining arguments will be put inside of an array, and we're doing that using the rest parameter. 
So let's go ahead and save. And we get this first console log here. We get our array of cat, dog, and elephant. And then we get the value of X is apple and the value of Y is bull. Now, you might recall that in a previous lesson, we looked at using the arguments variable to accomplish this. Okay, so instead of all this, and let's remove these parameters as well, we simply had console.log arguments. Okay, and if we save, we get this strange arguments keyword. And if we open this up, we've got something that looks like an array. Now, the problem with this is that arguments doesn't create a true array where we can actually use array methods such as, um, you know, map and filter. Instead, we would then have to convert this argument into an array first. Also, when we use the rest parameter with other parameters, arguments will instead just gather all of the arguments together. So, for example, if we put in those parameters again, so x, y, and then our rest parameter of z, and remember here we're using arguments this time. So if we save, what this will do is it will ignore the fact that we want to have two arguments here, apple and ball, referring to x and y, and then we want these remaining values to be put inside of an array. What this will do is it will just put everything inside of an array. So it kind of ignores the rest parameter. Also, arguments can't be used with arrow functions. Doing so will result in an error. So the best way to efficiently gather together an indeterminate amount of items into an array is to use the rest parameter and doing so gives us the added advantage of being able to use array methods such as push and pop. So guys, that's all about the rest parameter and how to use it. Let's go ahead and summarize. So the rest parameter is written with three dots, just like the spread operator. However, it does the opposite to spread in that it gathers values together into an array. And finally, unlike the arguments keyword, using rest creates a true array that we can use array methods on. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So for task one, create a function called colors and then collate all the arguments into an array and then log the second color to the console. So let's do that one first. Let's use a function expression down here this time. We could of course use either one, a function declaration or a function expression. So I'll say const colors and I'll assign this to an anonymous function. And of course here we want to use the rest parameter. Let's call this colors and it's simply log colors to the console. Oh, actually we need to log the second color, don't we? So that's going to have an index value of one. And then down here, when we invoke the function, we're going to provide it with some arguments. So we'll just have a bunch of colors here. So let's go ahead and save. And we get green logged to the console, which was this second value here. So the rest parameter is being used here to take all these arguments and put them into an array. And then we're targeting that array with our square brackets and we're looking for the second value, which has an index of one. So we get green in the console. Okay, for task two, we've got what will be the output of the following. So let's just copy all this and paste it in. So what will be the outcome of this? Let's see what we've got. So we've got a function called heroes. It takes three parameters, two normal parameters, A and B, and then the rest parameter, which we've called C. And then in the function body, we're console logging C. So we're console logging our rest parameter. And then we're also console logging C square brackets two. And then down here in the function invocation, we're supplying it with a bunch of arguments. So we've got some superheroes here. And so our first argument will be this A parameter. Batman will be this B parameter. And then the rest of our superheroes will be bundled together into an array because we're using the rest parameter on those. So the first thing that we'll see is we'll see an array of these values here. And then the second thing we should see is that we're targeting the value of two. So we've got zero, one, and two. So we should see Wolverine. So let's go ahead and save. And sure enough, firstly, we get our array of these three heroes. And then using this, we get Wolverine. Okay, so that's task two. Finally, for task number three, we need to refactor the code in the heroes function and pull out the array values, log them to the console. And in brackets here, I've put hint, use the spread operator. So all we need to do then is let's remove this. And instead of just simply console logging this array, we're going to pull out the values from that array and we do that, of course, by using the spread operator, which we learned about in the previous lesson. So now let's go ahead and save. In fact, we need to remove these parameters here first. Okay, so let's save. And we get all of our array values in the console. So guys, well done completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about a new way of writing functions, which is called the arrow function. And as you'll come to see, arrow functions are super, super cool. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.